is... I run the Global CIO Practice, so we recruit CIOs and CTOs for just about any kind of organisation from governments to major corporations to, you know, 10-man startups to charities to universities. And so in any one year we maybe see 30 to 40 CIO or IT director or head of IT depending on the, on the, the, the nature of the business and the job title, but that sort of genre of role. And, and therefore, what I thought it would be useful to do is to just kind of tell you, and I'm assuming that you are mostly CIOs and CTOs yourselves. Any interlopers in here? No? Uh, then uh, basically, I'll go through how, what it is that we're asked for, and therefore what it is that we suggest to clients they should look for in that sort of circular um, seat changing exercise that periodically happens. So this is really about you know, yourselves, and it's also, um, I'm just looking around to see whether there's anybody else, it's the advice I give to people when they come to me with CVs that are, shall we say, a little bit weak, um, and so that hopefully there's some insight that you can take away about that. I've put random documents on, uh, on the seats, uh, some of which are about our advice to chief execs on how to recruit a CIO, and some of them are about our, our views on the state of the marketplace in terms of technology this year. And hot off the press, but actually not printed because it's that hot, um, is this document called the new CIO, which I will allude to and which I can send to you afterwards. I've got a, a very, very limited number of copies. Um, and this is our perspectives on what it is that you guys and girls are going to have to do over the next few years to, to keep that seat or be successful in that seat of CIO as far as we see. And I guess, you know, we're an independent commentator in that respect. You know, there's no, there's no earth-shattering science in this, but it is born of meeting dozens and dozens and dozens of you over, over many years. So let me sort of crack on with this. I like this because this really sums up everything about being a CIO up to date, uh, you know, qu quite often uh, people come to me and say, well, yes, I've got, you know, great leadership skills and, uh, you know, on Tuesdays I, I, I sit on the strategic forum for this, that and the other. And, you know, on Wednesdays I sit at the right hand of God and, and, and all of these great things. But then you say, well, what is it you've actually done? You know, what do the business think about you? What is it that they, they have got from you? And it becomes an altogether less specific and a slightly difficult question. So what we're going to do is, oh, wrong, wrong one, hang on a minute, wrong key. Uh, oh, this is about us. So this is the advert. So this is who we are. I shall go over it quickly. This is just a, a selection of some of the stuff we've done recently. So um, interesting ones there. Well, they're all interesting. Aegis, um, 60, 70 companies around the world. Virgin, obviously, very sexy business um, and very, very complicated business. Low margin despite all of that. Condé Nast, Malcolm Sims, who was going to talk to you this morning, fascinating how their whole industry, uh, which is printing, they're the uh, GQ, Vogue magazine publishers, how their world has gone from completely analogue, and don't talk to me because we're looking at photos on a wall, to digital, as far as the customers are concerned like that, and yet the business still wants the photos on the wall. So, you know, kind of live with that one, Malcolm, see what you make of that o on a global basis. Uh, to Alpha Tame, which is a huge trading house in, in Dubai, through to the UK government. We've done the, the where well, we're the only search firm to have done, uh, recruited to the UK government seat, which we've now done three times, which is, um, which is about as difficult a seat as it gets, I think, in terms of actually making any, any sort of progress. So let's have a look, dive in. What are the attributes that we see a lot of? I'm not going to read the whole list. Um, so uh, pl please interact and ask me questions like which is the most important one, Alan, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then I'll, we'll get to the more useful stuff at the end of the day. And this is not an exhaustive list, but these are the things that we see most of. And I would say that the most important one that we're seeing at the moment um, is the uh, stakeholder management and influencing skills. But wrapped up in that, we've got a whole bunch of communication skills. It's about being able to live at board <coughs> level better than your peers on the board. You have to have a broader set of knowledge 
it might be more shallow in certain areas. You're not expected to do you know, lengthy tax computations as the CFO might do, but you are expected to know about the fundamental finance issues and the HR issues and the organisational issues and the process issues and the manufacturing issues and the sales and marketing issues. Uh, so you've got to know a lot of stuff uh, in terms of breadth and as deep as you can. And that's a, that's a big ask for anybody, given that your world is changing at an extraordinary rate of knots anyway. You know, the number of new devices, the, the breadth of devices that you have to think about. It, it used to be, you know, dumb terminals and a box that did stuff. Then it was PCs that did stuff attached to other boxes that did stuff across networks that also did stuff. And now you've got all the stuff that you carry around in your pocket, your iPads, your iPods, your iPhones, Blackberries, as well as all that other stuff, and you have to make sense of it. So I think your role is, is getting more and more difficult and you're going to have to prioritise what it is that you focus on as individuals going forward, but you will have to have enough or more skills in certain business areas than, than, than your peers do, otherwise they're just not going to take you, take you seriously. Um, so that's, that's what we're seeing at the moment, and as I said, I'll come back to that. Now, what's the common link between all of those things? Um, the common link is, is actually that you can't measure any of them. If we go back, please, can we go back? Uh, you know, how much stature and gravitas does that person have? Well, 2.7. You know, there's not a measure about that. There's a lot or, you know, not very much. How much tendency to action do we see? Well, we see a bit, but they don't actually write down on their CV or talk about what it is they've achieved because, do you know, it's not in their business nature to measure the results of investments. They just do it and get on with it. And you hear stories like this all the time. So all of these are unusually things that you cannot measure. So for us, that's really quite tricky because when a client comes to us and says, get me someone who does this, 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 and this, and <coughs> by the way, I'm expecting at least 10% off the bottom line. Hmm, okay, well, we'll have to go and talk to the CIO community to see who thinks they can do that. And therefore, there are, there are problems in sort of communication when you go and visit people like us, asking questions like, well, actually, what did you do? You know, what did you achieve? How much was it? What did the business get? And then on your CV, you have a tendency to write those things that you want to write down, which are, but I'm a great leader. I know that because people tell me that. And I'm a lovely guy. And I do have strategic, I really do have strategic thinking skills. And I've got superb emotional intelligence and all of these soft, squidgy things that you think you must put down because uh, these are the things that are most important to you. The regrettable feature is that we never read those sentences at all because they're your opinion. And actually, none of you ever write, do you know, I'm crap with my people, they hate me. I hate going to work on a Monday. I'm useless at this strategic stuff and the last three projects I've done have been a nightmare. I've not seen that document come through. So the validity of spending time agonising about who you are from an attribute point of view is, is kind of called into question. And in any event, if you are a CIO who is driving for results, who's driving for profit, who's driving for, for bottom line or cost efficiency, why is it that you don't write those things on your CV? Because that's surely the most, that's the reason you're there. You're there to add value to the business. And adding value means you've got to somehow be able to estimate it. But one in 20, on one in 20 occasions, maybe we see that in a CV. And my worry is that as CIOs, therefore you're not actually managing your teams and your organization to those ends because you've been sucked down into the technology again because the servers have crashed. You know, the Google Cloud thingy is not doing what it's supposed to do, or, you know, the mainframe's gone AWOL again and whatever. That's where you spend an inordinate amount of your time, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't be. You've got to drag yourself back to the higher level. So let's assume we can do that. Let's start with what it <coughs> is you achieved. So there's three things you need to, 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 to write down or think about. What is it that I did? How well did I do it? And what did the business get from it? So if that's, if that's what we're looking for, and that's, and that's how you should really think, how about any of these here? I mean, what, what, what are people's views on any of these comments that might, might or might not go into a, a, um, into a CV? Any good? Going to whet our appetite for a really exciting meeting? Going to turn a chief executive on? These are absolutely bog standard phrases that you will see on your, on your CVs. I can absolutely guarantee you've all got them. 
And the impact of these is, is that none of them actually do anything for anybody, which is a shame, but they don't. What would is this one, um, which is stuffed full of stuff, numbers, data. And what it says is, this is what I did. This is how well I did it. And this is what the business got for it. Bingo. It's, only a, it's a micro level one, but fundamentally that's how you should be driving your impact on the business forward because surely that's what you're there to do. You're there to add value to the enterprise and if, if this activity adds value to the enterprise then you should know and calculate how much it is so you can work out whether it was worth doing in the first place. Um, so numbers are absolutely crucial. Facts are crucial but it's those three points. What is it what is it that you did? How well did you do it? And uh, what was the commercial impact of that? Not, in some cases, it might be a technical impact if it's a, you know, if it's a response time thing and you are a, a website business and your response times have been killing you in terms of customer throughput, then yes, you've done it to improve um, uh, throughput, but that should be articulated, I think, in commercial terms in preference. Right, so what can you do now to assess whether you are one of these new 21st century CIOs? Um, you need two pieces of paper and you need to collect the top six achievements from your CV or your career over the last 10 years. And these need to be articulated at a level where the data kind of makes sense. You know, rather than saying macro, well, I, you know, I, I spent 55 million over five years and pretty certain we got value from it. We want to look at, you know, the, almost at the project <coughs> level, what are the really big things that you've done? And uh, what you want to write down um, is the data points associated with all of those things. So you're going to get one sheet of paper, divide it into two columns, and on the left-hand side, little paragraphs, what did I do, how well did I do it, and what were the commercial consequences? And you're going to need about six or seven. Now, if you are an effective CIO, you've probably got six or seven. Don't panic if you've only got four or five. If you haven't got any, it's a little bit tricky. Um, but, you know, that's, so, that's what you should be aiming for, I guess, is to try and get that left-hand column populated. But that only tells us what you've managed to do in one place. What we really want to understand, and you want to understand, is going back to that list of what people ask us for. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's what I've done for someone. But who am I really? What am I really? What are my skills? Get yourself a second sheet of paper, and on it, write down... 20, 15 to 20 single word adjectives or phrases that are the attributes that you think a 21st century CIO should have. And we put some on the slide earlier. These are the personal attributes, remember, that you can't measure, that you can't put on your CV, really, because we're not going to believe whatever you write about yourself until we meet you. Um, and put that list to one side, and you've then got that list. And it will say things like stakeholder management. It will say... Um, uh, team leadership, it will say um, uh, communication skills, it will say you know, intellectual horsepower, it will say technical understanding, uh, you know, it will say up to you know, about 20 of these things. So in the, in the right hand column, next to each of your six or seven bullet points, write down the three or four attributes that you, in your heart of hearts, know that you exercise to make it happen. And you're starting now to get an insight into what it is about you that does stuff, that is successful in the context of the CIO's role. So you maybe have strategic thinking, you maybe have tenacity, you'll probably have stakeholder management, you may well have project program management skills, um, and you, there may be one or two others that you would put in as really important to why it is that you are successful in that thing on the left. And then you can look at the whole list and say that some words repeat themselves um, uh, considerably. And you'll see also, if you're really honest with yourself, that from your list of 20, that some of the words aren't used at all. And this is great insight. It doesn't mean to say that you're sort of limp in any way, or because no one other than superperson is going to have all 20. What it does mean is that these are the skills that you either not had a chance to exercise, unlikely, over several years, but more importantly, these are the skills that you should be recruiting in your second lieutenants or your first lieutenants. These are the things where you don't major on, but they could do for you. 
Because at the end of the day, your CV is going to talk about a team effort, a team impact. It, it's, it's not going to be yours, although it looks like yours, it's got your name on the top and you use the word I in it regularly, it's actually your team impact. So understanding where your strengths are uh, will allow you to understand where your weaknesses <coughs> are, which should inform your, your sort of recruitment decisions. And you, know, you need to get them in your direct reports.